Sailing Home, A Story of a Childhood at Sea by Gloria Rand Illustrated by Ted Rand Ours was a wonderful childhood, a childhood spent at sea. My sister Dagmar, my brother Albert and I. Matilda grew up aboard the John Anna, a four-mast sailing bark that carried cargo all over the world. Our father was the ship's captain. The ship was our home. Only when the cargo was coal, which is highly inflammable, did we have to live ashore. The John Anna had bedrooms, a bathroom, and a main room that was a combination living room with a pink marble fireplace and a dining room with a big round table. There was a kitchen called the galley and a storage room full of everything we needed. Unlike most homes, Ours didn't stay put. At night, the ship kept moving, so every morning we woke up far away from where we'd gone to sleep. It often seemed as if we lived on a farm, not a ship. Roosters crowed, hens clucked, and ducks quacked. Mother raised them all in a neat pens below deck, so we'd have fresh meat and eggs to add to the ship's food supply. Dagmar and I collected the eggs. We all took turns caring for our pets as we traveled around the world. There was Minnie the cat and a dog named Murphy. We had a mongoose, a monkey, a pig, and even a kangaroo. The day the kangaroo accidentally jumped overboard, we screamed for help. The crew quickly lowered a lifeboat and rescued it. Our pet pig wasn't so lucky. She fell into a pot of hot tar the men were using to repair the ship's deck. Piggy died. We had a real funeral for her and a dignified burial at sea. Instead of a backyard or a playground, we had a great wooden deck where we played tag, hide and seek, and catch, always with beanbags because balls bounced overboard. We swung on rope swings and after our baby sister Anna was born, We took turns wheeling her around the deck in a baby buggy. When the winds were blowing hard and the sea was full of big waves, we played inside. Our favorite game was sliding across the main room floor in cardboard boxes, crashing into one another as the ship rolled from side to side. Time to calm down, Mother would say softly when we got rowdy. Let's read for a while. Mother taught us how to read and count. She was a good teacher. Father was a good teacher, too. Name that planet, he'd say, pointing to a bright, steady light in the dark night sky. Before long, we could tell planets from stars and even understood about celestial navigation. As a special treat, Father gave us our own set of signaling flags, and we learned to send messages. From the stern of the ship, we sent messages to Father at the bow and he signaled messages back to us. There were no radios then, and when we were out at sea, we seldom saw another ship. If a ship did pass close enough for us to see each other clearly, father or one of the crew exchanged greetings and information using signaling flags. Real school began when Miss Shipman, a governess, came abroad as our teacher. Albert didn't like her at all. Dagmar said she looked mean, but I thought she was nice. With Miss Shipman in charge, we went to school at the dining table six days a week, morning and afternoons, with only an hour off for lunch and no recesses. Miss Shipman was good at teaching us history, science, mathematics, and languages, but teaching us geography was impossible for her. We'd seen so much of the world, we knew more than she did. We told her about our family picnics in Japan and about palaces and cathedrals we had visited in Europe. Miss Shipman was impressed, but not with Albert. Albert didn't like school. He played hooky a lot. He'd sneak off to men's sails with the ship's carpenter or help the crew scrub down the deck with flat stones. Sometimes Albert crawled up and hid in a little cubby hole by the masthead. Miss Shipman would tattle to father, and father would bring Albert back to school. 
I like to get away too and be alone up in the rigging high above the deck. I like to feel the wind, smell the salty air, and watch the rolling oceans for as far as I could see. But I never got to stay up there for long. As soon as one of the crew spotted me, I hear a loud shout, Get down Matilda, you little spider. The crew watched us all the time to make sure we didn't get into serious trouble. They watched us even when they were working, scrubbing sails, laying them out to dry, polishing brass cleats and handles, and bending ropes. The carpenter made toys for us. The sailors makers taught us how to tie nautical knots, and the cook baked us special treats. We had the whole crew for friends. Even though our life was different from other children, we didn't miss out on anything. We had marshmallow roast at the fireplace, taffy pools in the galley, and foot races out on the deck. Moth always bought, brought along Christmas and birthday presents and decorations for every holiday. Only once when I was 10, we almost didn't have Christmas. That year, as we crossed the China Sea, the weather turned wild. We had just started to put up red and green garlands and ropes of sparkling tinsel when Father rushed in. Here, grab the sand and tie up that chair, Father ordered us as he unwound a big coil of heavy line. We all knew what to do. Like experts, we tied the piano and all the furniture to the railing that ran along the walls of the main room and to big hooks the carpenter was screwing into the floor. Mother put little things, lamps, knickknacks, and our candy dish into a heavy sea chest. Everything had to be tied up or put away. Otherwise, when the ship pitched and rolled, there would have been stuff crashing and flying all over the place. It wasn't long before we were in the middle of a terrible storm that stayed with us for days. The sky was black. There were huge bolts of lightning and the thunder roared so loud you could hardly think. No matter how bad the storm became, Miss Shipman made us go to school. The seas got so rough it wasn't safe to sit at the dining table. So we all sat on the floor while Miss Shipman conducted class. We slid back and forth across the floor as the ship rode the waves. It was like riding a roller coaster. After school, we pressed our faces against the portholes and cheered as tons of water smashed against the glass. When Mother saw what we were doing, she pulled us back. I don't want you to get hurt, she said. Those waves could shatter the glass. Two of the crew did get hurt when a gigantic wave swept them down the length of the ship. Father dashed out and pulled them to safety. Mothers sewed up their bad cuts with ordinary needle and thread. One of the sailors cried. The storm got worse and worse. Lifeboats were torn loose and smashed into pieces by gigantic waves, and the sails were ripped to shreds by screaming winds. But lucky for us, we didn't get seasick. We never did. Father decided the safest place for us to be was on the floor of the ship's chart room. That's when we began to get scared. Father tried to get us to think about something else, like having a Christmas party. When we get through the storm, he promised, we're going to have a grand holiday celebration. It will be the most wonderful party we've ever had. Let's start planning it now. At that moment, the ship rolled onto her side and didn't roll back. We all clung together. Mary, he said as he kissed our mother, the ship has broached and I think we're about to sink. Yes, dear, said mother, looking father right in the eye and smiling the bravest smile you'd ever hope to see. Neither of us showed any panic or fear and that made us children feel brave too. Father kissed each of us and told us we were great sailors. It seemed our families stayed hugging together forever. Then the John Anna quivered a strange quiver and slowly righted herself. Gradually, the storm ended and the seas became calm. Time to get our celebration ready, said Father. He had never sounded so happy. With all of us helping, everything was soon put back where it belonged. Girls, hang all this ri ribbon and tinsel up everywhere. And Albert, you're in charge of decorating the wooden Christmas tree, the one, the one the carpenter made for us. Mother was excited. Don't look, I'm about to bring out the presents. Your father has a surprise for you too, don't you dear? 
We all laughed because we knew what Father's surprise always was at Christmas. He became Santa. That night, we dressed up in our party clothes. The crew sang, My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean. They sang the best they've e they have ever sung. The cook filled the table with delicious treats, and we played the gramophone and clapped and cheered, watching Father dance with Mother. They were such good dancers. As promised, it was the best Christmas ever. We were safe, right where we loved to be. We were at home, home on the sea.